On today's episode of Parker's Reefs, I'm going to show you how to service your litre meter pump. Okay, so I get a few people ask me how they um, should go about servicing their litre meter three pumps. As um, most people who watch my channel will know, I run a lot of these pumps. Um, they do all the automation, um, all the automated water changes on um, each of my six tanks. Um, and while they're a pretty uh, bulletproof piece of gear, you do still need to give them a bit of a service. I try to go over each of mine every um, three or four months. Sometimes it slips out to six months, but um, if you can keep it to three or four months and keep them clean, you'll find the um, parts. You actually just to jump in, you can see this pump's 10 years old now. Um, so if you keep it clean, it'll last a long time. If you let it get away from you, um, you can go through rollers and tubing a bit more. So it's worth your interest to keep it clean. So you see I took the um, the pump off and then uh, took those three bolts off to remove the head. You can see some of these um, rollers got a bit of dirt in there. They've got a little bit of build up on the um, rolling surface itself. So we'll give them a clean. Um, and obviously the tubing itself and the um, aluminium pump head. So you can just pull the tubing out. So just be careful that you don't stretch it or anything. I'm just gonna pull that little bit of um, John Guest tubing out using my teeth, of course. And they're the best pliers going. And um, then I'll pull that tubing out so that um, I can give it all a good clean in there. So you can see the tubing itself is pretty dirty and there's also a bit of gunk inside the um, head itself. So we'll give that a clean. One thing to keep in mind with uh, servicing these pumps, you want to put them back together absolutely dry. You don't want any fluid or any sort of oil or any lubricant or anything in there at all. These pumps need to operate dry. So um, even if you do use some sort of solvent or um, soapy water or something to clean these out, just make sure it's 100% dry before you put it back together. I rarely ever use any sort of fluid to clean them. I find just um, a bit of towel is fine. Um, you can see the, the gunk inside the pump head came off with just a wipe of the towel. Some of these rollers, they tend to get, um, dep it's interesting actually, the one in my kitchen gets a little bit stickier. Um, I think that maybe just like a bit of the oil vapor and stuff from cooking in there might get into the, the pump head and make it a bit stickier. But you can see, I'll just give a bit of a wipe down, um, get all the gunk off the roller. I normally just blow through the center because sometimes you get a bit of dust build up in there. And just try to have that as clean as I can before I put it back together. All three rollers are almost identical. They've each got the same sort of little wear pattern there where um, a bit of dirt's been rubbing against or between them and the hose. So you just give it a bit of a wipe off. Um, I might fast forward through the um, next bit if you like, just so we can um, see that all three rollers are the same. Don't really need me um, telling you how to clean each roller individually, so we'll just fast forward. Okay, so that's all three rollers clean. Um, you can see I've got a little bit of gunk just actually on the uh, pump side itself, so I'll just give that a bit of a clean up too. It's also worth uh, making sure the um, that shaft of the pump's nice and clean. That's what actually turns the rollers. You want that to be um, free of gunk and nice and clean so that it gets good contact. Um, again, I don't use any um, solvents or fluids or anything. I just give that a wipe out. It normally comes up pretty clean. This one i would probably let go for maybe six months rather than the usual three or four, so it's just taking a bit more than usual but uh, it'll come up just fine. All right, I'm happy with that. That's nice and clean. Looks like a little bit of coloration on the shaft there, but can't actually feel anything, so that's fine. All right, we'll set that aside. Let's have a look at this hose or tube. It looks a little bit dirty, but it's um, not too bad. I'm just trying to get some focus here. I just try to um, make sure there's no splits or um, seams. I'm gonna just blow through it and get all the gunk out. Normally, yeah, just blow through that hose, get all the gunk out of it before I start wiping it down, and I just give it a bit of a wipe off. Um, this is where I may use a little bit of um, water. I normally get a little bit of water out of the hose itself. Um, I just check over it, just give it a wipe off, get as much of that black marking as I can off just to stop it dirtying up the rollers again. Um, one thing that I recommend everyone do once they've got to this point is to give the hose a really good inspection. Just make sure there's no um, cuts or, or splits or folds or... Um, anything that looks like it could leak because if uh, if you haven't serviced your pump for a while and they get quite dirty in there or, or you get a bit of um, grit to go through the, the tubing, you can um, slice the hose um, and if that leaks salt water into that motor, you, you will damage it. Um, like I said, these pumps are, are fairly bulletproof, but um, you do still need to keep on top of them. So a little bit of a look over this hose. I must admit, it's not in its greatest condition. You can see a little bit of a, a groove there. So this will need to be replaced very soon. Um, I'll just test it here. I'll block one end 
um, with my finger and I'll just blow through the other end just to see if I pressurize it, if um, it leaks at all. I apologize, I've done that pretty well off camera, but uh, you just have to take my word for that. I'm happy that it didn't leak, so I'm just going to put it all back together now. So I'll just feed that hose through. One thing to keep in mind here, the um, hose does have a, um, a contact side. It's got like a sticker or a bit of contact, I guess, um, on the hose, and that's the side you want facing the rollers. So when you feed it through, just make sure you've um, you've got it on that side. I'll just refocus the camera. That's a bit better. Okay. So that hose is in there. You'll notice it's got a couple of sharp kinks in there. That's totally fine. Um, we can just feed the rollers back in now. I normally You can normally push the first two in easily. The third one goes in a bit tight, and then I grab the Allen key that I used to undo it just to pull them into place. Perfect. I'll squish that all in, make sure it's in nice and tight. Grab the, uh, the motor itself. You'll find a little notch there. It needs to line up with that pin. Simply feed the pin through the middle, line up with that notch, push it down, put the three screws in, um, and you're pretty well good to go. At that point, it's a pretty good idea to um, recalibrate the pump because you have uh, changed it and cleaned it up, so it should actually perform a bit better. So whenever I do this, I always recalibrate the pumps, um, and you're good to go. You'll enjoy another six months, or maybe three months, three to six months of um, automated water changes. Thanks for watching everyone. If you have any questions, feel free to um, post them down below. And uh, if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to like it and subscribe. Thanks again. Bye.